Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Good morning, good morning, happy Sunday. It is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we are in a hotel room in Chicago, Illinois. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it looks okay. Everything should be fine. So <laughs> we, we're in a very tight spot, and that's okay. Uh, we normally don't do the Sunday morning recap together in the same room. This week, however, we are in Chicago. We're going to go ahead and get this thing knocked out before we head back to Memphis. Good times. Good times this week. Um, the show, the trip, everything. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. Go on down there. Check it out for yourself. Tunicatravel.com is the place to go and find out all of the information about it. Uh, so Tunicatravel.com, go check that out. Man, uh, we had a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Hung out with the Westlot Pirates boys. Uh, let's go on and, and start off with, with that, I yeah. guess. Could, could not be more gracious host. Tailgate, one of the most fun tailgates I've ever had, I've ever been to. Um, just good people, great atmosphere, gorgeous campus, holy cow. Yes, um, that place. Ryan Field <laughs> is, uh, it, it's a gym. Yeah, it's different. I mean, we're from like, the SEC, and we do big, monstrous buildings and stadiums. If you want something to compare it to, it's it's similar to Vanderbilt, but it is much more pretty. Well, it's it's just so much older. Yeah, it's much older. Yeah, and but it's it's definitely it's it's a beautiful campus. Uh, yeah, really, beautiful. Really stadium. enjoyed. Really enjoyed the the just the atmosphere. Whatever game was, what it was. We, we may not even get into it because it was a blowout. It's a really good team versus a team that's not good right now. Yeah, Ohio State is is next level. Yes. Like, they're they're absolutely legit. Well, yeah. They're um, one of the top four teams in right now, no matter how you pull any kind of algorithm, parameter, whatever. You're not leaving them out. Yeah. They they belong in that conversation. They're at the top of that heap. And, and Northwestern is as far from that as you can imagine right now. Yeah. So the game, no big deal. Just could, just could not have been more fun with these guys. Now you're you're absolutely right about that. The entire Northwestern tailgate bunch, the Westlot Pirates, go check out their podcast. Uh, you can find it anywhere, of course. You can find them on Twitter at Westlot Pirates. Great dudes. So John, Sam, Scuzz, we do appreciate you guys for having us up. It was uh, it was wonderful. I mean, right. it was it was so good. So we uh, we can't talk highly enough about them, and you got to make a trip up here. Like it's it's a lot of fun. Like if you just enjoy college football, the atmosphere, everybody locking arms, singing the alma mater. Yeah. Like that was great. That was just great. It, it, they they have fun, and they keep their expectation level normal. Normal. And that's kind of fun to see. Oh yeah. Like it's it's nobody freaking out about the football team losing. It's, you just, you expect what you expect. It's nothing crazy. So, uh, with that said, expectations were uh, high for a certain team and for several other teams. But this was close to upset Saturday. We'll say that. Yeah. Illinois 24, Wisconsin 23, kicker James McCourt hits a 39-yard field goal. This is after Jack Cohn throws an interception with, a little over two minutes left in the game, and Illinois gets the upset in Champaign over Wisconsin the week before Wisconsin is supposed to go to Ohio State for a big-time top 10, maybe top five at that moment, uh, battle. But it wasn't the only upset. It was the biggest upset. Ill Illinois, ab Absolutely the biggest upset. Not Ill even close. Illinois won outright as a 30-and-a-half-point underdog then you also had, and we'll get to the Illinois game momentarily because you've got some stats pulled up, but you had Vanderbilt plus 21 went out right against Missouri. You had Georgia Tech plus 18 and a half went out right against Miami. That was on the road, too. Yeah, that was at Miami. At Miami. Uh, Oregon State plus 10 and a half wins out right Call at Cal. One. Got that one. Eastern Michigan plus 9 and a half against Western Michigan. Boise loses as a seven point favorite against BYU. With a third string quarterback. Baylor wins outright at Oklahoma State, and that line had actually jumped up to six before kickoff. 
Uh, and then UT San Antonio plus six against Rice, and they went out right. Like it, there were a lot of big time money line upsets this weekend. Uh, talk to me about what happened in this Illinois game. I, I just a team in Wisconsin this year that has not turned the ball over. Yeah, against pretty pretty good competition. Um, absolutely, just couldn't help but give the ball away. Yeah, and when they turned it over, it was. You know, that one fumble, the guy picks it up, returns it 20, 25 yards, something like that. Yeah, and, and, like, and sets him up. You you just can't do that. If you're going to have the turnover, you need it to be as good as a punt, play defense, control it. But I think they scored on every turnover. Yeah. that That's a that's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Lovey that's Smith, how, this that's was, how you get got, and they got got. This is how Lovey Smith keeps his job. Oh, no doubt. Like it's, no doubt. It, Last week, Will Muschamp, we thought he was on the hot seat. We thought he might not be the coach at South Carolina next year. He got it. No doubt he's keeping his job. No doubt he's saving it. Lubby, same thing. Absolutely same job. Did you, and I don't know if we're actually going to get to it, did you see the interview, post-game interview with Derek Mason? So I don't have that written down right. as, as one so person. We're to talking do, about We're upsets. talking about, we're talking about The interview with Derek Mason on the sidelines when he was like, I know there are people that want this job. There are people that think that this is their job. No, this is my job. I'm the man for this team. For the, you know, I I know how. I was built for this. Yeah, I was built for this. Then he got all fired up, screamed, <laughs> screamed in her face, and like rolled off. I love that kind of fire from a guy who knows he's on the hot seat and knows they're not having a good year. And you know what? He took at that point in time, the only undefeated team in the SEC East. And just whipped their butt. Yeah, I absolutely did. 21-14 for Vanderbilt. That was, uh, I, I did not see that one coming. Oh, no, 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 no. I well, mean, they had not covered a spread UNLV all UNLV goes in there last week. And beats them 34-10. to 10. And, and beats them like Vanderbilt had quit. Yeah. I thought Vanderbilt had just absolutely done. Quit. The players were, were just out on Mason. No. I don't know why they got beat or how they got beat as bad as they did the week before. But that team bought in this week, yeah. and they they were fighting for their coach. Now you you that's, got that. That's right. a big deal. You got that right. All right, next topic up. Let's talk about Penn State and Michigan. Penn State twenty eight, Michigan twenty one. Ronnie Bell, wide receiver for the Wolverines, drops a God. surefire touchdown pass. Ties the ball game. with with two minutes left that would have tied the football game. Uh, Penn State goes up twenty one to nothing in this game. Yep. And Michigan did score at the very end of the first half to make it 21-7. to And I got to tell you, that as much as people want to talk about Michigan constantly losing and this and this, this was a step in the right direction. No doubt. Um, they did cover the spread. I didn't see that coming. Yep. But they covered the spread because they got the offense rolling. Yes. They were able to well, get... Just, they didn't just get the offense rolling. Uh, the they defense, gave, absolutely. They gave up 21 points pretty early in the second quarter. Yeah. And it was explosive plays early. And they didn't score again until late in the ballgame. Yeah, game. late in the ballgame. And, and the only way that they could score was explosive plays. But, yeah, they did right. not drive on Don Brown's defense. Correct. Michigan, they figured out, like, it finally, all this chemistry work and everything that Josh Gaddis is trying to do. But and it's going to take time to put in new Oh, offense. yeah, Absolutely. It, it, it takes much longer than just like an off season and whatnot. It's when you're I agree. when you're shifting philosophies. That's right. And what Michigan did here is, it's what you and I have talked about. You have to get the ball out of Shea Patterson's hands before he has a chance to think about it. Oh yes. And before your he, he your tackles, hot, he just needs hot routes. Yeah. They, they've got talent at the wide receiver position. You got to let those guys just catch the ball and be athletes. Yeah. You got to put them in space and let them go do their thing. And then and when you're open and he hits you in the end zone to tie the game, you got to catch that damn ball. Yeah. No, you're you're right about that. Uh, they ran 41 times for 141 yards. Michigan did. So the running yep. game kind of got going That's against right. a pretty stout <clears throat> Penn State defensive line. Shea Patterson, 24 out of 41, 276 yards. He threw one pick. Uh, but Zach Charbonnet. 15 carries, 81 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, it, this was this was a hell of a football game. No, this was really really fun. Really to watch. really good game in pretty evenly matched teams. You play that game at the big house. I see it could be the other way, same score. Yeah, not a whole lot changes, not a whole lot swaps. I think these teams are about as even as it gets. People are going to make the jokes about Harbaugh. 
and, and they're going to crap on him. And then he's probably going to get rolled by Ohio State again. And people are going to say, see, he just can't win. But it, it that's fine. The, the that's team fine. is improving, and that's definitely a good sign. Definitely a good sign. Let's move on to topic number four. Alabama 35, Tennessee 13. This typically would not be something that we would discuss uh, because this went, you know, it, as expected. Yeah. But Tua Tonga-Vailoa goes out with an injury in the second quarter of this game, does not return. At that point, Alabama was up, I think, 21 to 10. And it was... You could definitely tell, for all the people that have said that Alabama, any quarterback could be good in that system, it's just not the case. It's it, You give it time, I mean, hey, Mac Jones could come out next week That's right. and look, you know, well, he's going like a world to beater. Because he gets to play Arkansas. Well, and, and because he gets a week of practice. That now, definitely I don't, helps I don't, out. I don't, yeah. I don't think the week of practice is relevant. So, but <laughs> it's it, it, bad at football. With Tua in the football game, Alabama averaged 8.5 or 8.4 yards per play. And with him out, the offense averaged 5.1 yards per play. Still decent. Like, that's well, yeah. NCAA average. Um, but you're going to need Tua back. So, it, all the reports are that it was a, and I don't know how this is possible, it was a mild high ankle sprain, yeah. whatever that means. But he should be back in time for LSU. And you did see pictures afterwards of Tua in the locker room smoking a cigar with all the guys and what, and he seemed to be in good spirits. But I found it funny that during the football game, ESPN keeps talking about how, you know, Tua's in the locker room and, you know, no, he hasn't left the stadium. He's here, you know, being treated and da da da. And all the while, Twitter is blowing up because there is video of him getting in an ambulance and leaving Bryant Denny Stadium. And it becomes this big. You know, ESPN to a gate thing. Like, is he really in the stadium? Is he not? Well, he went to get an MRI done and then came back. And apparently, everything is fine. Yeah. So, while while a lot of Alabama fans did freak out, and I'm sure CBS and whoever else in the SEC offices freaked out because you want Alabama LSU. Like, you want that to be a big-time right. game, and it's just not without Tua. No. So, uh, but after that, it's all fine. The other controversy is... Jeremy Pruitt, and the the vitri- not maybe not vitriol. People talked about how ridiculous it is for him to like grab the face mask of Garantano, Garantano, and he barely touched it. But the quarterback went rogue, and I talked to you about this last night. The quarterback absolutely went rogue. He went with a different play than what they told him to run. The guard actually pulled on the play. So when you are actually just trying to get a push for a quarterback sneak, you don't pull the guard. Like you pull the guard for a running play to get, you know, to another part. Yeah. So when he's reaching over the goal line to try and get the touchdown that would have made it a one score or one possession game. Yes, sir. That you you almost cannot get that done if you pull the guard out. That's right. And yet he tried to do it while the card was pulling. So it was just very strange. Very, very strange. Uh, so I, I don't think... We both it, agree that it's still okay in 2019 to chew somebody's ass out, right? 100%. Like, that's not like a, like a jailable offense, a fireable it's, offense. It's like not, we're not going to take Pruitt out and shoot him for this. Like I don't lose think the, it's that degrading. You lose to Georgia Southern, yeah, we'll, we'll take you outside, we'll shoot you, and we'll... Pass but Georgia Southern would be one thing, but Georgia State's a different thing. Whatever. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Got it. It doesn't matter. But, like, like you can fire a guy for that, but him coaching up his guys, and if they make a blundering mistake that could absolutely cost you a game in which you're not supposed to be in this game to begin with, yeah, it's totally fine to chew that guy's butt. Yeah. Right? 100%. And, and people that want to say, <clears throat> hey, he was trying to do something good for his team, he was laying it on the line. That's fine. Like, he That's laid good. it on the line and he gave up seven points. Everybody out there is trying. Yeah. We're all, they're, they're all have the same objective. Yeah, they all want to win. Like, we, we guarantee that. Yes. But this was not a, this was not good. Uh, but for Pruitt, I thought it was perfectly fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I uh, do think Tennessee is improving. Yes. I think that that defense is finally starting to get it. I agree. Like, they're I really, agree. really young. 
and they are about a half step quicker now than they were at the beginning of the football season. Yeah. And I, it, it's I, almost night and day difference. I thought, no doubt, Pruitt's got to go after this year. Just go ahead and find the next guy. I know you can't keep firing people. you got to give people three years. I never believe in that philosophy. If you know you've got a losing hand, fold it. This might not be a losing hand. No, I, I think it just takes time, especially with a really got young a, team. Got a few outs. Yep, got to gotta be patient. Got to be patient. All right, next topic up. We got Baylor 45, Oklahoma State 27, and man, uh, Matt Rule and the Baylor Bears 7-0. and You want to talk about speed. Like, it, it, fast. Baylor has got some boys that can absolutely run the uh, – just – Fly by people. It was absolutely <laughs> incredible to watch. Oklahoma State had angles, and ninety percent of the people in the world are getting got. They're yeah. all getting caught, and he was just running by folks that had a complete angle on him. It was so crazy. I'm trying to find some stats. Keep, keep ha- Hasty yeah. is the guy. Sixteen carries, 146 yeah. yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Fleeks, the wide receiver, three receptions, 126 <laughs> yards, <laughs> one touchdown. And yards. and Charlie Brewer's stats were pretty incredible as well. Charlie Brewer, 13 out of 17, 312 yards, one touchdown. and 300 it, yards on 13 passes. That's pretty good, right? That, it's, it's not I bad. Mean, that's, that's, that's good. It's not bad. Games. It's an average of, what, uh, 18.4 per uh, per pass. That's right. So that is – and when you got a receiver that's averaging 42 yards per reception – it it just it, oh good. on top of that so they've got the other guy uh, the other kid Thornton mm-hmm. two receptions for ninety six yards yep. you've got a uh, Hasty the running back who had fifty who had three receptions for sixty six yards but yep. one of those went for sixty three right. like it it yep. was just so, eventually Oklahoma State wore down and that was all she wrote everyone questioned Baylor in the sense of oh they lost the heart and soul of their defense. He's not back. Another guy got a really bad targeting call that I thought was just, we got to look at this rule, man. You you can't throw a guy out. He was going low. He was going to hit the guy right in the chest, and the receiver is falling to the ground. And And like so he hits his helmet. It's just like, and he hits him like with his helmet. My shoulder should have hit your chest, but you moved your head into my head. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, but I I thought this defense is going to struggle. Losing guys or losing starters, and they didn't. They yeah. didn't. This Oklahoma State team can score with everybody. They held them in check, got three turnovers. This was a great game until about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And then Baylor said, no, sir. We're scoring. Then we take the ball away, and we score, and we take the ball away, and we score again. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It was It was pretty Charlie remarkable. Brewer is a damn man. I cannot wait. He's just incredible. I can't wait for Baylor, Texas. I can't wait for Baylor, Oklahoma. That's back to back weeks. Too. Yeah, both of them uh, in Baylor. Both of them in Waco. No, no, no. One's in. I believe one's in Texas. Is Oklahoma Texas goes to Baylor. Oklahoma. I mean, Texas and Austin. Yeah, it, I believe so. I thought they were back to back, and I thought they were both in Waco. I thought I was crazy. No, no, no. They're not. I, I don't believe that they're both in Waco. I think we talked about this yesterday. You and I did. Yeah. You pulled it up. I'm. Yeah, I'm going. So week eleven. It's TCU. Jesus, it's week 12 and 13. Yeah, it's it's super late. Because they get Oklahoma at home. Bad radio. Apologize, guys. And then they get, <laughs> no, they get, they're both at home. Baylor, Texas, home. I Baylor, Oklahoma, home. Back to back weeks. We talked about this. I know, and I told you you were wrong. You didn't believe me. Week 12. Oh, and they go to TCU, but they've got yeah. both Oklahoma and, oh, wow. Both of them at home, back to back weeks. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Waco is going to be where it's at. That is. I'm telling you. That is going to be a nice place to just get you an Airbnb for about 10 days and hang out. That is other world kind of stuff. Other world kind of stuff. Let's move on. Let's talk Oregon 35, Washington 31. Mario Cristobal coached them boys up. This was impressive from him. This is a good game. This is a good oh, game yeah. by both teams. Somebody's got to lose. This is just, I feel the same way about this game as I do the Michigan Penn State game. I don't know that this is a damning indictment on, listen. Washington shouldn't have lost to Cal. Yeah. Washington got a couple losses that they should not have. That they shouldn't have lost to Stanford with yeah. the third-string quarterback they, and only six They didn't show up in those games, and they got beat, and that's what happens. But They showed up in this one. They showed up, and they gave Oregon all they wanted. This was best on best, which is what I wanted to see. It's what we got to see. You're right, Mario Cristobal. 
Impressive. He really needs Utah to win out. He oh, needs yeah. he needs a one loss, not just top twenty five ranked. He he needs them to maybe work their way into the top ten. To and I don't know if that's going to happen, but the SEC we're going to beat each other up. Yeah, Te- teams are going to fall. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I think Utah will will one hundred percent be like a top twelve team. They'll be close by the to end the of the 10. season if they win out. Yes, they so. have to win out. Oregon has to win out to have a Pac twelve championship game that matters. And you you've already got a Washington team with. Three losses, yeah, and we're sitting no. on October twentieth right now. No, that that hurt. That just that just really hurts. That yeah. really hurts. No, it, it absolutely does. I got some kind of feedback. I don't know what's going on. I don't have ears, so I can't. Uh... But I think I think we might be all right. You sure. Yeah. There we go. We should be okay. All right. So next topic up. Let's go ahead and jump into that. We'll uh, we'll jump out of the Pac twelve. Next one is Texas fifty, Kansas forty eight. Now we're not going to talk forever about this, but. Kansas came back, got a two-point conversion to take the lead in this ballgame with, what, a minute 11 left? I love Les Miles so much. And in Texas was celebrating almost like they won the Super Bowl. I know. And I thought they wanted to rest the field. And they, they gave up 48 points to Kansas. Hey, uh, firing your OC at the bye week and saying you're not getting the job done and then finding somebody who's going to get the job done, not a bad idea. Less miles. Learn from his past mistakes. Less miles. You know you got a losing hand. You fold it. Yeah. You get another hand. You try this one. It this, was it this, was interesting. This one more. Listen, one of two things is happening. Either Kansas is going to finish this season strong, okay, and they are going to be much better than advertised, or Texas has massive problems. Well, I'll I'll tell you which do you think is more likely? They both could be true, by the way. I think, I think they're you, both true. What I think do you think is more likely? Texas has still got a ton of injuries on defense. Such a bullshit excuse. Everybody's got injuries, Gary. Yeah, but theirs, I think, are actually worse because they, they had ex, uh, inexperienced guys anyway. Like, they, they play better when those guys are in uh, in the ball game. So, here's, here's the numbers from last night. 569 total yards for Kansas, 638 for Texas. Uh, Kansas had 310 passing yards. And 259 rushing yards. I mean, they were just... That's pretty balanced. (laughs) 6.6 yards per rush for Kansas. That's really good. Um, And, I mean, obviously, you can talk about... That's that's not secondary, you know, being hurt, by the way. No, that's... uh, Puka Williams... They're running six yards a carry on your front seven. Yeah. It it was other world stuff. But Texas, Dicker the kicker. They pulled it out. They got the win. Oh, I wanted that upset so bad. Oh. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. Love my guy less. It's always going to be my coach. I can uh, I can understand. Always and forever, going nowhere less. Florida 38, and South Carolina 27. Now, this game, let me see if they've still got it pulled up here. Um, you want to talk about some bad officiating? Will Muschamp, uh, he went bananas in this Rightfully game. Rightfully so, and. Let's see. Here, give me your opinions on, on what went down. Well, this is, and, and let me tell you, this is two weeks in a row because I watched every snap of that South Carolina-Georgia game, and they're controlling the football. This game should never have seen overtime, and they call the tickiest tack holding calls on a receiver when the ball is sailed through the end zone on fourth down, which would have given South Carolina the ball back, and South Carolina could have knelt it. And the ball game would have been over. And the guy is running by, and the DB barely tugs on the towel of the guy. But if it's uncatchable, it matter. And the ball is absolutely in the air when he tugs on the towel, which means it's PI, which means you can wave a PI off if the ball is uncatchable. They called holding, gave him the first down. Georgia scores, takes it in overtime. They tried to take it away from South Carolina the week before. Now, this week, all the things that are happening, you got, A, you miss a false start. That's unexcusable. Nothing else is happening. Everybody is standing still. Yeah. When someone moves, everyone sees it. Okay? Don't call that. The ref is literally running down the sidelines with the DB running, and somebody's got his jersey for 20 to 30 yards holding, 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 holding. Don't call shit. Just, yeah. just, just don't say nothing. 
I don't know what to do about it's that. It's irritating. I don't know what to do about that. And I like, I hate the conspiracy thought of they're just out to get South Carolina or they're out to get this team or that team or they're trying to help this team or that team. Because I just always I don't, assume I don't think it's they're that. just incompetent. But at the end of the day, I don't know that it's possible to be that incompetent. I will I say this. I just don't know that that's possible. That, that specific referee team was at Alabama, Texas A&M the week before, and they were just as bad. They, they miss very obvious, blatant calls, and they're just not very good. Seemingly always on the side of the big team. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's, it's like definitely pretty crazy. The fact that that crew is, is not just bad, but they're always bad, and it benefits the big team, Yeah, and it hurts – the the underdog team, it just it just seems to be weird. And going into the fourth quarter, in, and with ten minutes left in this game, South Carolina was up uh, twenty to seventeen. That's right. And, and Florida was having a really hard time moving the football. They yeah. were having a really hard time scoring. They get the false start call there. They're back behind the numbers. We've seen this with Florida. When when they can play in front of the sticks, they can run an offense. They go, as soon as they get backed up. Almost every – now, LSU didn't make them punt a lot. But almost every time we made them punt, it was false start, holding call, and down yeah. one, and now it's first and 20 instead of first and 10. And they, they and don't – it's tough to win when they, you get behind yeah, the six. They don't have a lot of 18-yard plays in the book all the time. And if you get those penalties called, which are basic things that you're watching for. we're not. This is not holding Twitter, okay? This is not, oh, he was holding right here, holding right there. This is different than that. Yeah. And there was two of them on the same play. Yeah. I mean, it, and the was, refs were right there running with these guys. It, it just blows your mind when you think about it. Just, and I, it, I understand it is a very difficult job. I also I, understand that well, they're, they're highly compensated. For that's that very exactly difficult right. Job. That's, I never like to give people the excuse that, well, this is hard. No, you chose to be in a hard deficient, uh, uh, um, other jobs are hard yeah. too. And yeah. if you don't well, get your job done correctly, then you you don't get you, to do that job anymore. Yeah, yeah. You you chose a hard profession, and you supposedly have adequate amounts of training and whatever, but your level of compensation is worthy of the difficulty of the job. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Next topic up. Let's talk about six overtimes in ACC country. My boy Fuente, finally. He, Got uh, look. What's crazy is Virginia Tech is sitting at five and two know, right now. I know. Like that's how ridiculous that schedule is. Yeah. And we said like if he doesn't go nine and three yeah. this season, like it's oh, he, he guys got a really good chance to go now. I think he needs to beat Virginia. It's going to mm. be really hard to do. Yeah, I think it's going to be really difficult. Virginia is really good. Now, to be fair, like the numbers in this game were. Just stu- the, the game itself was stupid. I had to watch yes. it on my phone on the yep. SEC Network. Yep. Uh, so Chris didn't get to watch a lot of this. Well, no, because it, you, nobody, nobody has, has the ACC, ACC Network. Network. Heaven forbid you have a network where people you can showcase your product to the world. Yeah. Thanks. Good, good <laughs> job. Good job, guys. Sam Howell for North Carolina, 26 out of 49, 348 yards passing. He had for 49. Not really. That's not great, but he did have five passing touchdowns. Um, Virginia Tech, it was just a quarterback, running back, whatever by committee. Yes. Uh, you had Hooker, who was 8 out of 12. Every man up. Yeah, for 127 yards. Uh, you had Willis, who was 3 out of 3 for 55 yards with a touchdown. Uh, Patterson, 3 out of 6 for 54 yards with a touchdown. Like, this was, it was just crazy. Needless to say, Mike Leach would have said, this is a balanced offense. This is a balanced offense. Everybody gets 70 to 120 yards. Everybody got the... (laughs) No one person controlled the ball. No one person dominated the game. This was insane. And I, when you get down to overtime, forget about everything that happened in the game. When you get down to overtime, you get down to the dick cutting right here. That defense for Virginia Tech stepped up. Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought... North, it goes to overtime. North Carolina's going to kill them because their offense is just too good. And nobody – it's so hard to stop teams at 25 yards. Yeah. And if you've got a great offense, you should score almost every time. And one team has a great offense and the other team doesn't. 
Yeah. I, I could not believe the Virginia Tech defense manned up, stepped and up. And it was it was a lot of fun and to see great. the two-point conversions back and oh, forth. That was great. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I had totally forgotten that that was a thing. Yeah, you were I, like, you had sent a text because uh, well, I, we were in so different I, spots yeah, in we Chicago. Went, and I went to a place, I missed, so it goes, the fourth overtime, they missed the field goals. They don't score on the third overtime, crazy. They yeah. don't score in the fourth overtime, crazy. We get our table placed, we don't have a, a TV. And so I'm checking on my phone. And all I saw was they won by two. And I was like, how do you get a safety? How the hell do you get a safety when you get the ball in the 25? And, and everybody yeah. was like, once it goes to six, you just play two-point conversions. I was like, holy crap. Is that the first time we've seen this yeah, rule? Yeah, it's the first time we've seen the rule because so far. Because I forgot the rule was made. Yeah. I it's, totally it's after, it. Once you get into the fifth overtime. Oh, so the fifth one they went for, yeah. nobody got it. And nobody got it. Got yeah, it. And, and the play calling in those Because I thought we went three overtimes and they couldn't make field goals. But we went two overtimes and they didn't make field goals. I'm for. I look after it goes three. Just do it after three. Just do whatever. Well, cut it in half. Why? Why not? I mean, you got a point. Let's, you got a let's point. Let's go home. Let's end this thing. Let's. Uh, I would have finished the game then. I wouldn't have missed the end. Yeah, you're right about that. Bastards. Let's. Uh, let's go ahead and move into topic number ten. Georgia twenty-one, Kentucky zero. Now again, not typically something that we would discuss, but James Coley, the offense coordinator for Georgia. When you have as bad a showing as you had last week against South Carolina, yep. and it cost you the game, for you to come out and put up zero points in the first half against a Kentucky team that is starting a wide receiver at quarterback. quarterback. I was just about to say, the emer- not third-string quarterback, yeah. emergency fourth-string quarterback. Uh, they So everybody says the wet conditions no. Uh, no. contributed to the scoreless first half. You have got... You've got DeAndre Swift. You've got like just all sorts of guys that can run the football. People believe that this is still one of the most talented teams in the country that could win out and win the national championship, and I'm just telling you. I don't think so. That if they went out, they'll probably get in. That ain't happening. That That's just not happening. It, even even in super wet conditions. That Florida, uh, off, that Florida defense against this offense and the cocktail party, I don't think Georgia has a chance. What are we? You two, may be right. Were we two weeks out from the cocktail party? Yes. I, I, Both teams have a bye now. Yes, and then they and they play. That's right. And I, Florida needs one. Holy. Girl. I don't think this Georgia offense is going to score on Florida's defense. Uh, you may be right. And they have crazy talent in Georgia, just crazy stupid talent. Cooley's got two weeks to prepare, and guess what? You're not going to be ready. Yeah, you're probably right. Kirby's got two weeks to prepare, and guess what? He's not going to be ready. Jake Fromm, his stats in this game. After an abysmal... I bet these are going to be good. Nine out of 12 passing for 35 yards. Nice. It's an average of 2.9 yards per pass. It is a QBR of 6.5. Six. Now, yes. Single digits. It was wet and gross and everything else. We play in the SEC. The weather sucks all the time. Yeah. It's 110, or it's rainy. Or, the the know, team, uh, overall, 43 carries, 235 yards, averaged 5.5 yards a carry and three touchdowns. Uh, Kentucky couldn't get anything going. Uh, no. uh, Lynn Bowden, Jr.? Yeah. Two out of 15 passing for <coughs> 17 yards, no touchdowns, no picks, and a 3.3 QBR. Like, it, it, was, it was nasty out there, but, man... So I kept checking this game and checking this game, and I was like, oh, my damn app is frozen. My damn app. And then finally, like, you text me the halftime 0 0, and I'm like, yeah. Like, oh, and what I thought you were showing me is this your app is frozen too. And I'm like, is it, nope. we're using two different apps, and neither one of them are working. Only on this one game, this doesn't make sense. Like, why, why is it still showing 0 0? And, and not, okay, you should have paid attention to the clock and the time. Listen, I'm, I've been throwing down pops all weekend. So, you know, <laughs> I went in the greatest state of mind, and I just, I just couldn't believe. I'm, I'm getting mad at my phone because yeah. I think something's wrong with it. And then finally, you were like, "No, it's Georgia, like doesn't have first downs in this game." Yeah, it was really bad at the I half. Just, I just didn't understand it. I, I couldn't figure it out. No, it was it was definitely nuts. Like everything about it was just bananas. Absolutely bananas. What a stupid game. What a stupid game. 
Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and wrap this thing up before we get out of here. Uh, let's talk about Wake Forest 22, Florida State 20. And and basically what this means for Willie Taggart. Um, well, first off, Wake Forest is a good football team. They are a very good football team. Like we they should have, have won this game. Yeah, should have won this game. They I, were at I, home. I think they should have won this game. Florida State is now 3-4 and four on the season. And that is not good. Um but Wake Forest, like Blackman comes in at quarterback for Florida State. Not great. He had 27 out of 43, 280 yards. He had two touchdowns. He threw a pick. Uh, Akers is what kept him in the game. 30 carries, 157 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, I mean, Wake Forest did what they always do. Hartman actually played in this one, not Jamie Newman. Um, and, yeah, I mean, if you're Florida State, you're playing a backup quarterback, you got to be able to. That's you, right. you got to come out and do this thing. But Hartman, 21 out of 38 for 308 yards. At Florida State sitting at 3-4. and four, And they still have Miami, which is whatever. Uh, they play Syracuse next week. They play Miami the week after that, Boston College. And then you got to go to Florida. That Syracuse game is going to be interesting because both those Both are 3-4. and four. Are, And both of them look bad. Yeah. Like, I don't know who should win that game. I, I couldn't predict an opening line in that yeah. to save my life. No, I'm I'm with you, I'm with you. I just I, I have no idea, but, I mean, if you're Florida State, you got to get three more wins. You you got Alabama State, but you need to win against either Florida, Boston College, Miami, or Syracuse. You you got to win three of those. Well, two of those. Excuse two. me, because Alabama State, you're going to get that. You're going to get that. We would assume anyway. I don't I don't know that they're getting two of those. I Miami think, is not great. I think right? the Syracuse game could be a coin flip, and the Miami game right now could be a coin flip. And, and both of those are in Tallahassee. So but you got to hope good. that you win two coin flips, basically. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That is crazy. Willie Taggart, man, I, here's hoping. <laughs> we we hope good things happen for you. Yeah, well, yeah. But man, this is just absolutely bananas. All right, that is going to wrap up the Week Eight college football recap. Live from Chicago. I apologize for my voice. Yep. Uh, it's I've, all good. We're all the same way. I've had a good time. We've uh, we've definitely had a good time. We can't wait to get back up here. Of course, if you went to any games this week, make sure and comment on the YouTube. Uh, hit subscribe for us if you're watching on YouTube. Share out the show. Tell your buddies about it. Uh, tell us how your weekend was. Where, like, what other campuses we need to go to because Northwestern was absolutely great. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you guys being here. Of course. Go over to tunicatravel.com. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check out all of our podcasts, previews, videos, everything else, uh, and our social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and then, of course, YouTube and the podcast. Make sure and leave a review. We will see you guys again in a couple of days, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Be good, y'all. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.